Shalom, shalom, family, friends all over the world. Karibuni sana, happy new month. My name is John Mwangi. I'd like to invite and welcome you all to like, follow, subscribe to Slice of Today's social media platforms. That is Slice of Today in Facebook, YouTube, Telegram, Twitter, and TikTok. Slice underscore of today in Instagram. At the end of this broadcast, there is always an invite for you to be added to Slice of Today WordPress post. You can inbox my brother to be added to Slice of Today WhatsApp group. Ladies, gents, prayer team different content for the various groups. Remember this month of April, you are doing the uh, book tour of the five love languages. So tune in for daily updates for the same. And it's always a pleasure and a privilege to interact together with you as we share God's word. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this other opportunity of giving unto us to hear your word. We receive your word with faith. We receive your word with thanksgiving, we, th we receive your word with joy, and thank you because it shall find room in our hearts, in our lives, in our families, in our businesses, to have its full effect. May your word bring life and light unto our beings. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray and believe. Amen, amen, and amen. Karibuni mara nyingine. So we shall be doing a topic or a series uh, which is on stewardship, which is on stewardship the book of first corinthians chapter number four verses one and two first corinthians chapter four verses one and two the bible says this is how one should regard us as servants of jesus christ and stewards of the mysteries of god many other times as believers most especially as ministers you there there are things or ways you want to be thought of Kwa hivyo kuna yule ambaye angependa kufikiriwa kama the mightiest prophet kuna yule ambaye pengine anadhania how he looks in the eyes of men is that he is a mighty uh, 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 person etc etc lakini here we are being told this is Paul speaking and anasema this is how one should regard us so when you look at us when you are describing us this is what should be in your definition that we are servants of Jesus of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God so we are but servants and we are stewards of something. So a steward is somebody who has been given and entrusted with something. You can't be a steward while you are not managing any estate. If I can use that term, if I can use that phrase. So you can't be a steward and when we ask you, what are you in charge of? You say, I'm still in search of it. Like in here, Paul is defining a kwamba. We are servants of christ and stewards of the mysteries of god moreover it is required of stewards that they be found faithful so the success criteria of a steward what shall be the definition of whether they are successful or not whether they are failing and how successful they are is in regards to their faithfulness so faithfulness is key to every steward Revelation 1 1 the Bible narrates so this is the last book of the Bible The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show to his servants The things that must soon take to place He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John So this is the revelation of Jesus Christ which gave to him which God gave to him to show his servants That the things must soon take place He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John John. So you are so John here is a servant. Remember First Corinthians, which you have just read. So John here is a servant, and what is he being entrusted with? The revelations of what will happen, what will come to pass. So you are a servant of God, and you are entrusted with responsibilities for men. So the stewardship under which you have been called unto and your serving capacity of it is unto men. And Matthew. All this you are offering as service worship to God. So you are, you are serving and worshiping God through men. So for instance, I love this illustration. You as an usher, when you're wiping chairs, you're wiping chairs, having the consciousness that I am serving God, I'm offering service to God. So even that's what... Uh, tithing is all about so we are tithing to god but it is men who receive the tithes men can receive god can reject it men can receive god can reject it so you should always offer your tithe with a consciousness 
that I should be faithful. Why? Yule ambaye anayona, yule ambaye anaipokea ni mungu and I can't deceive him. So we can applaud you here on earth that you are a very faithful tithe. Lakini kile ambacho mbingu inasema ni ya kwamba my friend you are giving 7%. So that is not tithe. And you won't receive the reward which follows from the same. I'd like us to look at two parables. It's something that we've ever covered in slice of today. The first one I would like us to look at is in Matthew chapter number 19 or rather Luke chapter number 19 verses 11 to 27. The Bible says, I'll try to read as fast as I can. As they have these things, he proceeded to tell them a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. So the one reason as to why Jesus gave this parable Nikua, it, it was to impress in their hearts that the kingdom of God itakaka before he kuje. So alikuwa nafikiria ya kwamba before he accomplishes his mission on earth, the kingdom will have come. He said therefore a noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minors and said So a minor, according to this uh, 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 Bible, defines a minor was about three months' wages for a laborer. So think about it. You can give any figure. So if it's 20,000, so it's 20,000 times three. So in other words, he was giving them capital. He was giving them capital. I'll, I'll explain why. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minors and said to them, engage in business until I come. So they were supposed to do something in the marketplace with what they had been entrusted with. Something also you need to notice in Yakwamba and you need to consider in Yakwamba, he gave 10 minors to 10 servants. Each servant received a minor, which is a three months wage. But his citizens seated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not do what this man, we do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, so it wasn't relevant their complaints weren't uh, uh, regarded <laughs> so whether or not you believe that jesus is coming a second time wouldn't keep him in, in heaven it wouldn't prolong his days there <laughs> because he is the noble man who went to receive a kingdom then come having received the kingdom he ordered these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know what they have gained by doing business. The first came before him saying, Lord, your miner has made ten miners more. He said to him, well done, good servant, because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came saying, Lord, your miner has made five miners more. And he said to him, you are, you are to be over five cities. Then another came saying, Lord, here is your miner, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. And I was afraid, for I was afraid of you because you are a servant, a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and report you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You know that I was a severe man taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in a bank and at my coming I might have collected it with interest? The reason as to why he gave them my nassos so that they can engage in business, business is for profit. Business is for profit. So it was not, you are not saying at go and give it to charities. Kwa sababu wanabia huyu ya kwamba, kama unajua hivyo basi ungeenda uweke pesa yangu, my capital which had entrusted to you in a bank. And it would have yielded interest at least. So it was, you are saying this is the very least that you could have done with that which had given you. Uh, and they said to him, um, uh, bank interest 24, and he said to those who had who stood by, take the miner from him and give it to the one who has the ten miners. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten miners. I, I say to you that to anyone who has more will be given, but to the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here to slaughter them before me. When I was the lessons that we have learned in Yakwamba, this master went giving each servant a miner three months wages. They want to engage in business until he comes, do business in the marketplace until he comes. Number one, the one who produced Ted was called a good and faithful servant. The one who produced five was called a good servant. The one who produced 
or rather did produce, but brought back what he had received was called a wicked servant. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 25, 14, the Bible says, For it was like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. So here it's according to capacity. Then he went away. Verse 16, he who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and he made five talents more. So also he had two talents, made two talents more. He, But he who had received the one talent went and dug it in the ground and, his, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of his servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful of a very little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set over you much. Enter into the joy of your master. He who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered to him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was mine with interest. So take that which from uh, so take the talent from him and give to him who had ten talents. For to everyone who has more will be given, and he who has and will have an abundance. But from the one who has not even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness, where there will be the place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. From this one is. The master entrusted to his servants according to their capacities. The one who reproduced five, the one who reproduced two. More, more were called good and faithful servants. The one who did not make any profit or do business with the talent he had received was called a wicked servant. So something that you can uh, notice from the two parables in Yakwamba, the one who had the most is interested with even more. And from this parable we are being taught according to their capacities, their reward was the, to enter into the joy of their Master. In the book of Revelation, chapter number 22, this is the last book, the last chapter, verses 12, the Bible says, And our master is coming, anakuja upesi, na anakuja na zawadi, kumzawadi, kila mmoja wetu, kulingana na ile kazi ambayo amefanya. So, in God's mind, we are stewards, and in God's mind, he has the attitude of rewarding us according to our labor. So, a steward is supposed to engage in business until the master comes. So that is the attitude and the posture, the approach we are supposed, we are supposed to take life in. Yakwamba, we have been called of God and trusted with responsibilities and an account will be required from us. Never forget, it. an account will be required from us. So the success criteria of stewards is actually faithfulness is actually faithfulness. After being attached to the true vine, remember the Gospel of John, I think John 5, the Bible says, Yakwamba, our work is only to abide in the vine and we will bear fruit. So when we remain in this kingdom, what is expected of us is fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. And it so happens that fruitfulness is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So, fruitfulness, you know, a tree does not struggle to bear fruits. As long as it has been availed with the necessary conditions, then it bears fruits. So, haitaka po ikingangana, ikingangani, nasema lazma nizai, lazma nizai, lazma nizai, lazma nizai, hapana. As long as it is attached, it will bear fruits. So as believers, we are supposed to bear fruits of the Holy Spirit and among them is faith, is, is faithfulness, fruitfulness. So uh, Galatians 5, can I trace it first, first, first. Galatians 
Galatians. Galatians 5.22, the Bible says, Actually, it's not there, sorry, but you can look at it in your own time. So, a steward, we have defined a steward, and we have seen here, a steward is somebody who has been given responsibilities by someone. So, there is the aspect which comes in place, which is of submission. So, what is submission? Submission is actually to submit under a vision, to submit under somebody or to submit under a system so for you to submit there must be the aspect of who is above you then you can't regard yourself as a steward you will be an owner when i begin a company i am the ceo anybody else who follows after me is a subordinate so you are a subordinate to which is the aspect of submission. So who are we supposed to submit under? Who are we stewards of? Number one, we are stewards of God. We are stewards of God. The book of James chapter number four, verse seven, the Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves therefore to God. So we are supposed to submit under God. Luke 22, 42. This is Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible says, this cup is too much for me to bear. If it were possible, I will request for it to be taken away from me. But he concludes this prayer before it's being uh, uh, betrayed by Judas, the Bible says, but let not my will be done, but yours be done. So, Jesus was submitted to God, and God, his master, his, yeah, God, his master has a will. Mary, in the book of Luke, also, chapter number 1, verses number 38, the Bible says, when he's being spoken to of, uh, spoken to by uh, angel Gabriel, he's being given a good report, and I'm here, you shall bear a son. He says, how can this be since I know not a man? The Bible says, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall bear a son. The Bible says, let it be to me in accordance to your word. In accordance to your word. So, the will of God, God whom you are supposed to submit to, has a will. And his will is found in his word. The will of God is found in his word. So, to whomever you submit under, that is God. Who has given us the inheritance of salvation has a will. So we should submit and ourselves under the will of God. Under the mighty hand of his uh, the mighty hand of your scripture in the in a quote. So we are stewards because we have been given this. We are we are servants to God of God, and we have been entrusted with something for our generation, for, so, for those who are, are, are subject to us, for those who are in our circles, etc, etc. And from the two parables, I'm sure you have learned something. This is part one. Stay tuned even as we pick it up in our next episode. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom. Until next time, may God keep charge over you even during this week. And it is well with you together with your household. And may the Lord bless every work that you do with your hands. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Bye-bye.